Hi guys, welcome back to Britain on a Bike. I'm Hugo and this is going to be my kit this video for what I'm going to be taking across America. So here you can see my bike, it's fully loaded up with my five pannier bags. Um, it does look like quite a lot and a lot of tourists, cycling tourists do go a lot lighter. This allows them to go further in a day and um, also is allowed to carry less weight as well. Um, the reason why I've opted for such a quantity is because I'm going for three months and I'm taking also a few more home comforts so I can get a bit more enjoyable night's sleep whereas some people are a bit more comfortable just sleeping underneath a basher or something else. Um, but yeah, so that's why I've opted for so many bags as well. Um, first of all, I just want to get out of the way that I've also picked Ossily pannier bags. The reason why is because they've got this really useful and handy uh, quick release system. So what we have to do is pick up the handle and slide it off and that's the pannier bag off and it applies to all these panniers on my bike and it's just going to be really useful at the end of a long day's riding. Um, so I've had pannier bags in the past where they just had been in one big pannier bag over the rear wheel and that's just been a nightmare to try and like screw on and screw off and it's just been, yeah, it's the last thing you want to do when you're knackered. Um, you could, I've also opted for front pannier bags because it allows me to spread out the weight uh, between the front and the rear wheel. Um, if you have all the weight over the rear wheel, you can get some major mechanical errors like um, broken spokes or maybe even a cracked rim. Um, that can be quite a serious uh, issue if I'm out in the middle of nowhere. Um, and that could definitely be a danger. So I've decided to spread out my weight um, to try and help avoid that. Uh, right now I'm going to go take off the panty bags and then go to show you a bit more specs about the bike. Right, so what we have here is the Ridgeback World Tour, the 2014 model. Uh, one of the main reasons why I picked this bike is because it comes in a size 60 centimeter frame. Now, if you're like me, you're six foot three or maybe even taller, it doesn't make you a giant. But if you want to go cycle touring, there's not really much unavailable on the market to suit your size. Um, some people do go for a size 57 and raise the saddle. Now, I wouldn't do that because uh, whilst you do raise the saddle, your handlebars are still going to be in the same place and the top tube length, this length here, is not going to change. So you're kind of going to be squashed leaning downwards invertedly. Um, to get into a cycling position, which isn't a very comfortable ride, especially when you go for nine hours a day for weeks on an end. So um, I was really keen to find a size 60 centimetre frame to get that extra level of comfort. Um, you can see it's got drop down handlebars, um, which is really quite nice because it allows you to get into def different positions, like down here when you're cycling downhill, get into a more streamlined position, um, and also get up here for when you're going up hills and you need to stand up a bit more. Um, so yeah, that's good versatility, it also uh, allows you to move around your wrist a bit more which I found a problematic when I had a straight bar and I so called to roam. Um, yeah my wrists were killing so I really, was really hoping for something like this or maybe even a butterfly uh, handlebar but I, my budget wouldn't stretch that far. Um, yeah, uh, also I've got this combi pedal as well, these don't come as standards, something I've changed. Um, what half of it is like a normal pedal where you can just wear, wear any shoes and cycle and the other half has got a clip on so that's really useful for when you're actually trying to do some long distances because it allows you to uh, keep pedaling on the upstrokes as well so that adds around about an extra mile an hour they say so I really recommend using, uh, getting some of those. Um, it's got a cantilever brake system which is really good, quick and easy to fix uh, or tighten if should you need to. Um, and the rear wheel here, uh, rear cassette, sorry, uh, has got 11 to 32 teeth. Now, uh, that really, that's quite a wide range, something you might find on a mountain bike. Uh, the reason why I opted for something with that specification is because it allows you to have really low gears when you're going up hills. You're going to be carrying all that weight and you want the lowest gear possible so you can keep going up. You don't want to get, ever get off your bike and walk it. It's, it's never a good thing. So getting something like that with a really wide range allows you to have that availability on those steep hills but also keep uh, high gears available for when you're trying to put out some serious speed. Um, there's an aluminium frame, I forgot to mention that. So that's really nice and light. I think it comes in at about 14 kilos this bike. So that's okay. Uh, you can get lighter obviously with titanium and other materials. Um, also means it's easily workable if I ever get a crack in the frame. I'm Touch wood, I'm not going to get any of that. 
Uh, and what else has it got? Uh, it's got 700c wheels. So this is something that's very narrow, which is good for reducing road friction. Um, and also, I've always had 700c wheels, so I've got loads of inner tube spares for that. So that's kind of what, another specification that I wanted. Um, yeah, uh, some people go for a Brooks saddle. Now, Brooks saddles, everybody says they never have saddle soreness with a Brooks saddle. I have a lot of Brooks saddle, you can see that. Um, it's uh, just a standard stock saddle, and I put an extra gel padding over the top of it to help reduce saddle soreness. Brooks saddles, they start around about 150s, and whilst they do last forever, um, my budget only goes so far. Um, I've stuck with the original pannier rack on the rear because uh, it's perfect for the hooking system on my pannier bags and yeah if it ain't broke why try and fix it um cool well that's pretty much all i'm going to say about my bike i'm now going to show you uh what i'm going to be taking inside my panniers so i've just emptied all my panniers out uh, across my bed and you can see it's actually probably not as much as you would have expected considering the size of it all when it was inside the panniers on the bike um, but I will show how I repack the panniers at the end of the video but for now I'm just going to go through some of the kit um, okay so first up is my tent this is a Gillert uh, Rocky 2 this is a two man tent I picked this because uh, I've used Gillert before I think that's how you say it, Gillert um, I don't know, I'm dyslexic so I'll just stick with Gillert Gillert um, are a really good company because I've used them before. I used their solo tent, which is a single man tent, uh, when I went home to Rome over five weeks. No, yeah, five weeks I think it was, I went for. Um, and I had no problems with it at all. It was really quick and easy to set up and it was really small and lightweight too, um, whilst also being very, very affordable. Um, one of the more, most affordable on the market, I have to say. Uh, Right, so I've now gone for a two-man tent. The reason why is because a single-man tent will not give me enough space to store all my panniers inside my tent at night time. Obviously, I don't want them to get stolen, so I need somewhere to keep them safe. The safe space is my tent, so I've gone for a two-man tent. Um, right, um, now here you can see I've wrapped up some clothes, or the clothes I'm going to be taking, inside bags. Now, I've done this for a couple of reasons. One, it just makes packing and unpacking a lot, lot easier. It's just so much easier to stick this inside a pannier and pull it out again whenever you need to, rather than having, if you need something at the bottom of a pannier and your clothes are in the way, and you've got to get pull out every item of clothing uh, in order to get to that one piece of kit, then you're going to be putting out all your stuff out onto, uh, out onto the roadside. And it's just it just makes everything messy and dirty and a hassle and this just saves everything also allows you to separate your clothes into what you need and what you don't need and also your dirty from your clean clothes as well so i can't think of a reason why you wouldn't do that to be honest um, this is a inflatable roll mat um, it's a really good i think it's much better than having a foam one just because it's half the width which is really really good uh, for what we saw inside uh your side your panniers um, it's it's only marginally heavier and only marginally more expensive, but it's such a space saver that I think that really outweighs the two uh, two cons of it. Really, um, this is again they're not really expensive. I think this was well, this was actually a present. So I don't know how much this was, but um, yeah, I, I just think a inflatable roll mat is much better. Um, I'm taking a, another Gillert product. It's a Gillert One Season Pioneer sleeping bag. Um, now, some of you guys might think I'm a bit crazy for taking one season sleeping bag, considering the fact that I'm going um, between spring and well, yeah, between winter and spring. At the moment uh, in New York, it's uh, snowing over there, and I'm due to be in New York in two weeks' time. So, taking a one season sleeping bag might seem like a crazy idea. Um, my logic behind it is this is just so small and so lightweight. Um, I, it's so much smaller than anything else. Um, yes, it may be thin and not very warm, but I can always put on a hat or some extra clothes when I'm inside the tent and need to. Um, however, if it doesn't cut the mustard and I'm still cold every night, I can I can just uh, buy a two or, two or three season sleeping bag and throw this one away. So for the moment, that stays. 
Now, I know I just said about the clothes I'm keeping inside bags, but these, this here, are all my socks. And now, here, when these are inside the panniers, I like to stuff these in between the gaps that are left, and that really helps me maximise the space available. Um, I also do the same with my jerseys. Um, I've only got one cycling jersey here with me now, because the other two or three are being cleaned. Um, right, I've got, also got a knife. Always need a knife when you're camping. Now this, I think, has to be one of my favourite bits of kit. Um, this is a battery. Um, it's a portable battery, uh, which has four, U or three, sorry, three USB cables slots there. So you can charge up any USB items through that, such as my phone, the camera, um, my MP3 player, various things. Uh, this one is a um, Anch Anchor second gen Astro E6 and it's got 20,000 milliamp hours so in contrast to my phone I can charge up my phone 10 times before I need to recharge this so that's really really going to save my bacon when I'm out in the middle of the desert um, yeah I've also got some other cables in there which connect to stuff that I need such as the camera um, yeah but that I think is that's what's really going to be one of my more valuable items. Um, some people opt for solar panels and stuff or a dynamo uh, hub, but dynamos can be technical to fix if anything breaks and solar panels can be a bit of a faff when you're cycling along and you pass a tree and they stop. Uh, so I think a portable battery is just the simplest way to go. Um, here, okay, so now I've got the wash bag. Obviously you've got all your standard toiletries in there. Um, I've also got mosquito uh, repellent, got uh, other things to wash my clothes with, some washing up liquid, some sun cream as well, anything else like that, anything liquid based really. Um, I've also got here some subtle saunas cream some, to help prevent chafing, which is going to be quite important. I'm also taking some protein bars with me, some nine hour muscle support bars. I don't really know what these are like. I've just bought them off eBay. Um, but hopefully they'll be good. Chocolate and orange. Can't go wrong with that, right? We'll see. Um, I've got this towel. Now this is a lightweight towel which normally compacts down to a really, really, really small size. But I don't have that bag anymore to keep it in. So it's just a really lightweight towel, um, to be honest. Um, it's a shame really, because that could have been really useful. Oh, one thing I did mention, I've got an inflatable pillow too. Sometimes I, in the past I've used a bag of clothes to use my pillow, but that thing is just so small, I think that'd be a lot more comfortable and stops me getting my clothes out all the time. Um, I've got some dried food here, and I've also got a ball in the bag meal. This is in case I can't get to a shop before it closes. Um, I'm stuck in the middle of nowhere, at least I won't starve to death, so some nice emergency ration packs. And if I need to cook, which obviously I will, I've got this little nifty gadget. So it's a saucepan and it's also got a, sorry, a frying pan and also a saucepan. But the cool thing about it, it's got these foldable handles that come out. Um, not all the camping gear I've seen has that and it really does make such a space saver having it. So I really, really do treasure that. Uh, or treasure the aspect of that anyway. Um, now this, this is my bag of bike repair stuff really, uh, I've got my inner tubes, my allen keys, uh, my oil, clutch repair kits, all that stuff. Um, I've also got my travel adapters, my first aid kits and I'm going to have any chargers that I need as well for my camera, for my phone and stuff, stuff as well. So I've kept that all in there, this is going to be an easy to access place in case I ever need to make a roadside repair. That's good. So again, keep it in a bag so that's all safe, the oil doesn't go everywhere and ruin everything. And last but not least, um, I'm having this, I've got this beautiful thing. It's a high-vis jacket which also doubles up as a uh, waterproof jacket. Um, it's got a nice breathable layer there so it doesn't get too hot for when I'm cycling in the sun. And also, uh, it's got a rear pocket there which is pretty standard on cycling clothes. So you can read something when you need to. Um, okay, so now when it comes to packing the panniers, or fact, before that, I've got to 
mention, I've got two different types of panniers here. Yes, I've got a front pannier and a rear pannier, but they're different. Both Ottlieb. Um, one's a city pannier, which is this one, and then the other one is a classic pannier. Oh, you can also see uh, I put my little customised all my panniers with my name on it. Um, yeah. Anyway, the city panniers and the classic panniers are slightly different in the way that not only the size, because that's a 41 litre and this is a 25 litre pannier, but this has got two locks at the side, which is how you roll it down and you lock it at the sides. Whereas this one has got just one strap that goes over the top. Um, this allows you to store more stuff in it. Um, and it also, but it also comes with a shoulder bag, a shoulder strap there. So you can just simply undo that and walk around town with it if you so please to. But um, yeah, I guess I find the city one a little bit less faffing to open it. So I keep, the, that's why I opted for these ones as the front veneers. Okay, so. How do I pack my panniers? Well, let's start off with the top panier, or the top bag, which is this Osley Pack Rack 31, which is a 31 litre bag. Um, I've got some extra bags inside here. Bag, 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 bag. <laughs> Sorry, I need to increase my vocabulary. Um, I've also got some gloves, very essential. Um, I actually picked these up on a whim at my local bike shop. Um, this tends to be a more at market bike shop than I would like but having said that I bought these gloves and it's been a godsend I absolutely love these they've kept my hands really warm which is very important because your hands do get numb from the elements it's got a sweat patch on the thumb so you keep that sweat out of your eyes and it's also just made the, it's got some padding there to stop you getting calluses on your fingers um, yeah cool so in here this is going to be my easiest to access bag so I know I'm putting my tent in there, but that is the only thing that's going in there. Everything else could be my food, it can be books, it could be maps and stuff. Uh, so that's all going to be going in this top panier here. Okay, what I do is just scroll it down and do that. Just clip it on, it's done. Um, I attach this to the bike by using these two things here. I just zip that underneath the panier frame, panier rack, and then just clip it on there and tighten it as necessary. Um, cool, right, so that's my top bag. Now for my rear ones. So we've got this pannier first. I like to organise my panniers by uh, keeping my stuff in compartmentalised, I think is the word. So here in this one, for example, I will put all my clothes. So I'm not gonna need my clothes until the end of the day, hopefully. I won't uh, need to get chains there to the road or anything. So I just stuff them all in there. Um, rather than no, no need folding done, just do it like that. So now I've got a few spaces, so I put the socks and the jersey inside. Now, put that down to the bottom. Just, you can see a bit of space down there. And that's cool. And now all I do is I Roll these down and put the clip across. Job done. Um, now with this other rear panier, um, I put my sleeping bag stuff. So pillow, roll mat, and sleeping bag. But I'm also going to put in my towel there. And also this, I'm putting this stuff on top so that I can get to it first if I need to. Okay, so that's all in there, nice and neat. And same story again. Um, I forgot to mention that these Ottilie panniers that I bought are all waterproof. That is a very, very important thing. My last trip, I didn't actually take a waterproof bag and neither did I waterproof any of my gear. So one day, I was cycling along and the storm came around and soaked me uh, head to toe and all my bags and I everything electrical broke which was a nightmare. Um, so yeah definitely opt for waterproof stuff. It may cost a little bit more but it'll definitely be worth it. Um, right so front panier, uh, this one 
This one's not too essential because um, I don't really need this stuff as quickly. So put my wash bag, my food in, put in my uh, snack bars in as well, put in my uh, chart, portable battery, some cream, and I'll even put in this. Actually, no, I'll save that out. And centre stem, roll down, and clip it in. And then last but not least, this is where I put my camping stuff in and my bike first stuff. This will be where this is what I'll go to first if I ever have a problem with my bike while on the road. So it's a very easy to access bag. Don't have to do I'll take off the top pan here and sort any of that malarkey out. Yeah, just do that, and that is pretty much everything. So yeah, thank you very much guys for watching. That's everything I'm gonna be taking. Um so Thank you very much guys and as always please don't forget to like, share and subscribe and if you can please please do donate to Break the Road Safety Charity. Thank you. Mm -hmm.